Hey guys, welcome to the video. So, why should developers learn APIs, frameworks, and libraries? Is it necessary, really? Should you learn these things? In this video, I'm gonna give you the five reasons why you should learn these things. Now, you don't have to be an expert in all of them. You just have to have a basic understanding. Maybe you pick one or two that you specialize in. But anyway, let me just jump into the five reasons why developers have to learn libraries and APIs. So I'm gonna read them off very quick. So if you have to go play Call of Duty or something, you have the time. Uh, number one, uh, you can't do it all from scratch. Now I'm an old school nerdling from the, from you know, 2000 years ago, where we had to build everything from scratch. Um, so, well, 1994. So you don't wanna do that for several reasons. So first, that's the first principle. You don't wanna build everything from scratch. In fact, what I always teach people is the top three rules of code, number one, two, and three, is reuse, reuse, and reuse. First thing that you do when a project comes to you is that you look around to see what else have other people done uh, out there on the world, in the world, before you start writing code from scratch. Last thing you wanna do is write code from scratch. You don't wanna go looking for code to write because trust me, there's gonna be plenty of code for you to write. This video is sponsored by Filestack. Filestack is a file uploader and file upload API. It fits right in line with what I've been talking about. As you can see with Filestack, we got some big players who trust them, including LinkedIn, Airtable, Teachable. So what does this API provide? It provides essentially a super easy way to implement a file uploader into your app Simple code, three lines of code here, a little JS and Bob's your uncle, three lines, and you got yourself a, a fully functional file uploader and it has all kinds of cool capabilities that come with, including OCR, virus detection. You can integrate it with, uh, you can file upload, excuse me, to sources like Instagram, Drop, Dropbox, and more. It's pretty comprehensive. So you see here, you have your user uploads a file, it goes to the file stack storage and then it is sent to where you want it to be. The plans and pricing are extremely reasonable. As you can see here, it's free. If you do one gigabyte of, damp, of bandwidth, 500 uploads, 1,000 transformations, very, very cool. That's, for a lot of people, this will be more than enough, especially when you're first starting out. When you're first starting out writing any apps, you wanna avoid writing code. Remember, as I said, the top three rules of coding are reuse, reuse, reuse. So even if you get into the paid program, this is actually fairly inexpensive because to build this type of service into your app from scratch would be very, very time consuming and expensive. It's not something I would do if I wanted to get my product out there. Check out Filestack. Filestack is a file uploader and file upload API. It's uh, very reasonable. It makes uploading files easy, does transforms, OCR, virus detection, drag and drop. Check it out. Number two, potential jobs. Let me name a few popular libraries and frameworks. Uh, React, Vue, React.js, Vue.js, uh, Laravel, PHP framework, um, let's talk about uh, content management systems, WordPress, uh, Joomla. If you were building a content heavy where you needed a content management system, it's not something I would write from scratch. I would look to see what's out there. The biggest one, of course, is WordPress, and there's Joomla, and there's others, Drupal. Anyhow, so uh, there are a lot of job potentials surrounding learning a particular library or framework or being able to leverage certain APIs. All right, number three, speed of development. Speed of development, huge, right? You don't want to uh, spend 2,000 years writing a piece of code. When you leverage libraries and frameworks, yes, you're gonna speed up your development quite a bit, so that's another one. And number four, less bugs. When you are using frameworks and libraries and APIs, these are bugs you won't have to contend with. If you tried to build these things from scratch, you're gonna have bugs, why? Because that's the nature of software development. So by leveraging a third-party API, you eliminate all these bugs and refinement issues. Trust me, you don't wanna go there unless you absolutely have to. And number five, the reason you wanna learn APIs and libraries and so forth is because you'll learn how to become a better coder. So for example, if you decide to learn an MVC framework like Laravel or Django or whatever, Spring Boot, whatever it is, 
whatever particular specialization you want to get into, when you dig into the library, into the frameworks, you're going to learn how many, many, many developers have iterated and refined how to build a framework, how to organize code. So when you see this, ah, this actually works pretty well, that will teach you how to organize your own code. It will give you ideas. It will give you a roadmap in terms of best practices and so forth. So there you go. Those are the five reasons why you should learn APIs and some libraries. Again, you don't need to learn them all. You just need to be aware of what's out there. And depending on the type of work you want to do and the type of local jobs that are available, you would uh, jump into a particular library or not. So let me just recount. Number one, you can't do it all. You can't write everything from scratch these days. We're all leveraging other people's code. Number two, uh, there are potential jobs associated with a particular library framework. React comes to mind, Vue comes to mind, Python Django comes to mind. If you are good at React, there, there are jobs available for you for React developers. Number three, speed of development. Number four, less bugs because you're using a library or a framework or an API that's all been debugged for you. You don't have to worry about it. Number six, you'll learn how to write better code by watching what these people have done, these being the framework developers in the case of frameworks, how they implemented things. It will just make you a better overall developer. I practice what I preach. We have and I have developed from scratch libraries uh, and entire systems. But at the same time, I also uh, use and leverage other people's systems and APIs on a regular basis. Before I even think about writing a stitch of code or having my developers write any code, the first thing I do is I look to see what's out there. And if there's an API we can leverage, for sure we're going to leverage it. It's much cheaper in the end. So I'll give you an example. Um, I've even retired code bases and application I develop, applications I've developed because I said it was too costly for me to keep maintaining my software. It was just better to license a third party. So I used to have my own newsletter system. I wrote it from scratch, Java-based, a whole newsletter system with send and check and people could unsubscribe and all that kind of stuff. It was a newsletter system. But as I got into the business, I was not in the business of generating newsletters. I was in the business of sending out newsletters and promoting my business. So I didn't want to have to maintain my newsletter uh, software with all the updates that are required to maintain these things. So I just trashed it and I licensed some third party. And I haven't looked back. All right, I hope you found this video useful. And uh, yes, I'm wearing an unusual hat for a video, but uh, you're going to have to deal with it.